Pristine boat paint is 90% preparation and only 10% application. We will show you exactly what products, tools, and steps are included in this preparation. Our steps are fairing, sanding, priming, and using a special putty for filling pinholes. We'll start with fairing because no one wants to watch five days of sanding, but just know that we had to grind and sand every surface that we are planning on painting. The three main tools we use to grind and sand are going to be a four and a half inch grinder, a five, six, or seven inch orbital sander, or DA, and an oscillating tool like this fine sander. Getting these corners, I use this fine sander with these pieces like this. What I do is I get a belt sander, and like this is 36 grit, I will take this belt and I will cut the belt, and then I'll put it on the fine sander with this attachment here, so that way I can stick that down into the grooves like this to get these really rounded out edges it leaves a nice finish once it's done fairing requires four basic products a resin which could be epoxy or polyester the hardener or MEK for the resin a sanding aid with wax and the fairing compound or powder that we mix up to a mud like consistency. There are two consistencies that we will be looking for when we mix it up, being either a thick peanut butter consistency, which we will use for vertical surfaces, and a smoother, creamier consistency that we can use for filling holes and smoothing things out. When it comes to fairing, this stuff is only for fairing. It's not really for repairing, say, cracks or holes or anything like that. If you've got a crack or a hole, then you need to repair it with glass first, then fair over the top of the glass to make it flat and smooth it out. The purpose of fairing is to basically remove lumps, uneven spots, and make smooth transitions, bends, and fill in voids or imperfections in a fiberglass surface. So if you've got a bunch of blisters, you need to first find out what's causing the blisters, but then after figuring out what's causing them, then the fairing filler will be used to smooth out the surface. Fairing filler comes in different powders and two-part compounds. You can mix the powder with epoxy or polyester resins. Collodial silica is a common powder used. It's more structural and not necessarily for fairing because it cures super hard, so it's more for like an adhesive filler. Total Boat also makes some good compounds, but for us today, we're using polyester resin with MEKP and this sanding aid for our resin mix. The sanding aid will create an outside layer to the filler when it dries, which helps it to cure up hard. Just know that when you use the sanding aid, you do have to grind in between the coats of fairing filler. Once you've stirred up the resin, the MEK, and the sanding aid, we'll add our fairing powder. For our fairing filler, we'll be using West Systems 407, which is a low density micro balloon based fairing filler powder but they also make a 410, which is easier for sanding. Also, this is the bottle that we're using to measure the MEK to add the correct amount to our resin. Based on where we will be applying the compound, we'll determine how thick we want the compound to be. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of it up and show you. First time we're gonna do the peanut butter stuff, then the next time we're gonna do the creamy stuff, and then I'll show you how when we wipe it off, what it looks like once we get it wiped off. We are going to take our fairing filler and pour that in there like this. Now we can stir this up. Should we wipe it off the sides of the of the bucket? So this is what I'm talking about with runny. That is runny. We need a little bit more than that. And that is just above our peanut butter consistency. So this is what we're gonna want for to make it thick. That's about pretty much exactly the way we want this for building because it just barely runs. Actually, that's that's more for smoothing. We'll probably add a little bit more to this to get it to stick on vertical surfaces because it runs just enough. So if you're doing a vertical surface, you need a little bit more than that. And that's for a vertical surface. See how that sticks and doesn't drip? That's exactly what we're talking about with the peanut butter consistency. Then we can just take our fairing filler and using a plastic spreader or a rubber squeegee, we can then apply that onto the boat and make it as smooth as you possibly can to minimize the amount of sanding that you have to do later before applying the second coat of fairing filler. Then the next one, we don't want it to be as thick because the thicker it is, the more void you're gonna get in it or air pockets. So as we came back through, you can see all these little holes here of these air pockets that were left because of it being so thick, which now that we've put that first coat on there and built it up, 
Now we're gonna come back on a second coat because we've sanded it down. So now this is all smooth, but you've still got all these air voids basically of the, because of how thick it was. Now we're gonna make it a little more creamier and have it a little more runnier just to fill in all those voids, but also when we smooth it off, it'll be smooth. Before we do anything else, what we're gonna wanna do is we are going to want to take our air nozzle here and you can see all these holes. After you sand them, they're full of stuff. So we wanna take our air And that way we can blow all the stuff out of there and then we'll come back over that and wipe that down with acetone it'll save us a little bit of work on the back end because after we primer we're going to take some of that glazing putty to fill in any pinholes but any of these big things like this we can go ahead and hit those now with like this right here we're going to hit that with some more fairing filler to take all of those away so you can see how this is a lot creamier and it's running off so it makes it a little bit more difficult to trowel but with for filling those little holes that's what you want because we can smooth it off a lot easier than we can with that other stuff so let me show you about this right here by doing a couple examples So as you can see, it fills in nicely all those little holes, like these right here. But it's gonna leave us with a lot less sanding to do. And anything left over that's got a hole in it, we'll be able to hit with that glazing compound. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go around the boat with a pencil, and we're going to mark any low spots that we find, or anything that we need to kind of fix, like obviously you need to pack some stuff into this right here anything else that I can feel I'm just gonna circle it a lot of that stuff the primers gonna take care of but any deep stuff I'm gonna hit well now we should only have to go one more light round with the sander We've got everything fared out. We've went around all of our pencil marks. We've hit every single one of our pencil marks with our fairing. We've built up a couple spots. We are gonna have to um, do a little bit of grind, you know, sanding on some of these corners and these edges, but that's kind of the way you gotta do an edge. There's not really a way around it outside of first building it up. And then once you build it up, then we can come back and knock it down smooth so that way you'll get a nice sharp corner. Other than that, that's kind of the only way that I know how to do these corners like this. So that's a little thick. Other than that, everything else is all filled in, fared up, built up. We'll hit everything once with the sander. A few moments later. We've been pretty much all the way around the boat now, sanding everything off, finding any high spots, getting all the gummy stuff off, and pretty much have the entire haul inside and out smooth ready for the primer all this is pretty much done as well except for that spot there so now i'm going to take this off of the trailer i won't be able to get up on the boat anymore but we don't need to get on the boat anymore once that spot's sanded we'll walk around the boat with our air nozzle and blow out all the little holes and everything that around the boat spray everything off once it's all been sprayed off with air we'll come back and wipe everything down with acetone just to make sure we get anything that's left on the boat off of the boat before we spray the primer just because we're outside in the air in the elements it can get all kinds of dust and stuff on there so making sure we wipe it down with acetone just to get anything that's on there off of there before we put our primer that way we won't have our primer bubbling over time say if there's a little piece of grease or a little nick of something that we missed if that's on there and we prime it, that will bubble later and fail. After we get everything prepped over there, we'll go ahead and move over here and start this process. That's why you want to wipe it off. Look at all the stuff that came off just on that top portion of the thing. All that dust, all that dirt, you got to get that off before you paint.
Well, we've got everything blown off, cleaned up. Everything has been wiped down with acetone, even our camera tripod. So that is sitting there because I do want to keep that close to show as we spray this. We do need to hurry up because the sunlight's starting to come in. So we maybe got an hour and a half in order to spray the whole boat. So we're going to begin by mixing up our primer and then we're gonna spray the inside first. We're gonna do three passes on the inside. Once we do those three passes, we'll do three passes up here on the top. Well, actually we might start up here at the top, do three passes on that, come back, hit all this three passes, and then we'll come back and do the entire outside. And what we're gonna be using is some all grip primer. So this all grip here is a two part primer. It is a, just a gray finish primer and the finish primer epoxy. So there's your converter and the white base. It's a 50 50. So we're going to mix this up into our cup. We'll probably do, you know, eight ounces and eight ounces together, fill the hopper. We're going to filter it. We'll put one of these filters in the hopper before we paint it. So we'll do eight ounces, eight ounces, stir it up real good. Once it's stirred up, we'll run it through the filter into the hopper, and then we will be ready to paint. And then we'll just continue back through that entire process until we have all the coats on there. We might have to take one break in between everything uh, just because of how long it's probably gonna take to do the whole boat. We might have to stop in the middle, run acetone through our gun just to clean the tip out and clean everything out. That way we get a nice even spray, but we'll see if it starts to clog up or not. If it doesn't, then we'll just keep spraying until it does, but hopefully we can do it without cleaning it, but we're ready if we do need to clean it. So let's mix up our first coat of primer, fill our gun, and let's lay a line. We do have our fan. <laughs> We do have our fans going right now. They're going to be blowing anything over spray out of here just because we don't want anything on this boat. I covered those motors just in case, but there shouldn't be any kind of overspray since we're all the way over here and we got our fans going up into the air. So there's a kind of a gust of wind going over the top of the boat. So any kind of overspray is going to be taken outside of the tent and it won't be getting on anything that we care about. So Donovan is over there sleeping and I will see if I can get him going.
so now that we've got her all sprayed and primed up we're looking a lot better than we did all this is going to go into the rub rail so everybody that comes over keeps pointing out that there's a run right there but again that's going to be under the rub rail and i am the world's worst painter so we're not too concerned about that but the rest of this is looking pretty smooth i do need to go ahead and finish cleaning up a couple spots down here that are messed up steve's getting a phone call so we'll wait till he's done getting the phone call but the rest of these little pinholes we're gonna have to come back and hit all these to clean all this up with some glazing putty and then also everywhere that i kind of messed up the gun i actually didn't have the air compressor on for some reason on the gun it was shut off and therefore that's what all these wrinkles are i was too close and then it just started spitting out but we'll be able to sand all those out and clean all that up the glazing putty to fill all these little pinholes but at least now we can see all the pinholes that we need to do it's not near as bad as we thought it would be and it's actually looking pretty good for what it is and so now it's time to do the cleanup of all of our gun and all the mess that we made while we were painting so we need to clean out the gun get the tip all cleaned out clean up all this mess so let's go ahead and clean that out i'll show you how we clean the gun with some acetone. So first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to fill our hopper with some acetone and we're gonna leave it plugged in though. I'm going to show you what we got for the paint gun this right here is the most expensive paint gun at home depot um actually that's a lie this is probably the mid-level one at home depot it's only like i don't know 100 bucks so actually this is the one that's like sixty dollars it's not the hundred dollar one but it doesn't come with the regulator or the nipple so you got to buy the nipple and this little regulator thing that shows the thing also you never want to hit that with acetone it clouds up the plastic and well as you can see you can't see it so 60 bucks for the gun comes with the tips you buy that little thingy to turn it on and off and check the pressure this one right here um i believe turns the air on and then you just squeeze the trigger and check the tip to see how it goes put paint in it and that's pretty much it that's uh that's it 100 bucks for the gun and boom you're painting obviously you need an air compressor to run the gun but other than that that's pretty much it for the equipment obviously i suck at painting so you know take what i say with a grain of salt but you really want to stay i don't know six to eight inches away from what you're doing and you want to be consistent you also want to go slow i have a habit of going too quick and when you go too quick it goes on thin and if you go too slow or you get too close then it lumps up and ripples but for the most part this isn't too bad i got some low spots that i needed to fill right there but besides that that's not too bad it went on fairly well so that's the gun um the paint the primer that we used was again this all grip 545 all you need is one of the hook things and with the hook thing a couple two by fours boom now you can hold your thing mix up your paint pour your paint in and you're rocking and rolling okay here we are today we've got the uh, primer on the boat and now we need to go around with a light and we are going to look for any imperfection at all with our light going around like this so all these pinholes that are like this all these pinholes i will be able to fill all these with the glazing putty hey 
That's not where the drain I'll goes. I'll find you an imperfection. <laughs> <laughs> the glazing putty will fill all the pinholes, but I've got some other stuff coming that's going to fill all these right here. I was hoping that our rub rail was going to go over that and cover that, but after I looked at the rub rail that we've got um, and that I'm going to get, it's not as big as what was on there. I think going with a smaller rub rail is going to make it look a lot better. So uh i'm gonna have to go ahead and fix that as well as down on the bottom too because the rub rail only came to like here so i've got like a quarter inch down here that i've got to fix i've just got to get rid of anything like this all those imperfections i gotta fix all those because now they are going to be visible when before i thought that they were not so what we're going to do today is go around with our light first and anything that's big i'm going to mark the big stuff with the pencil and then once i mark everything with the pencil all the way around the boat then i know where my big stuff is i might have to sand a little bit here but then all my pinholes all the other stuff like this that big divot there i'm gonna have to cover that with the other stuff but these pinholes i'll be able to fill that with the glazing putty and then once those pencil marks are on there then we're just going to start from one end and go all the way around the boat by section putting the glazing putty in all of the little pinholes. We're still here going around with our uh, glazing putty and it's just a very time consuming thing to go around and hit all these holes. Got the light here. I like to look into the light so you can see any kind of hole that's there with the looking into it like this you can see a lot of stuff like that right now i've gotten all the way around the entire outside of the hall except for the bottom up here in the front but i'm going to move ahead over to the console once i'm done with the console we'll move to the inside of the boat do the inside of the boat then we'll go down here hit down here and then we'll take our light and walk around the boat one more time to make sure that we didn't miss anything. And as long as we didn't miss anything, we'll hit all those spots. Then we're going to come back and sand all this stuff down. But we'll actually also need to do the other putty for our bigger stuff. And for that, we're going to be using this Evercoat polyester glazing putty with a hardener. It's a two-part deal and that is going to be for all of these big spots like this right here for that right there and for like this right here where i need to build this up a little bit more just to clean that edge out right down there i need to hit that um that's what we're going to use that putty for obviously like those i'm not worried about those because this is all going to be under uh bottom paint so we're going to do those once we finish the hull with our real paint we will pick the boat up and stick it on a rack that will let us get up underneath there to do the bottom paint. Well, here we are again for another round of sanding. See, all we got to do is go around this whole boat with 220. We'll probably have to use a little 120 on some of these thicker spots on this stuff that I put on here. But all the rest of this is just going to be hit with 120. I have penciled in any little marks that I missed. So we're going to go around this morning and just fill in those pencil marks with our glazing putty. And then anything that is deeper that we missed i missed one spot up here i didn't get a chance to get to that one so we gotta do that one a couple other little spots that have sunk we're gonna hit with our glazing putty this stuff the two-part stuff but once we get all those filled in then we will start sanding and we'll just spend the entire rest of the day sanding everything out and then that way tomorrow we should be able to come in in the morning and spray our paint
All right, we are on to the final phase of this process. Now we've got the boat out in the sun so we can see everything. So we can literally go around and see all of these spots where we need to do a little bit more work. So what we're gonna do is come around and I'm gonna do pencil marks around everything. That way we can come back and make sure we don't miss anything when we do this. Because we only want to do it one more time. And a lot of times you got to feel it with your hand. So. This just needs a little bit more sanding. So we're going to put an S there for sand. Besides that, okay. So now we're going to go around the whole boat and feel every inch of it just to mark it all up so we know what we got left. And here we are with the final pass of the filler and the sanding. So went around, we have got everything circled. I mean, you can't even see that there is a problem here, but in the sun you can. So there's just little itty bitty things that need to be filled like this right here. There's just a the tiniest little bit of holes. Same thing for here. There's like three little pinholes right there, but now we can we put it out in the sun we can see everything so before we paint we need to go ahead and fill each one of those some of the spots like this needs to be sanded same thing for these hatch marks so circles are filled and hatches are sanding so we are at the point now of you know that'll be need to be sanded down a little bit this will need to be filled a little bit so we'll go through and we will fill everything that is circled with our glazing putty We'll take our glazing putty since it's all little stuff and we'll fill all of our circles with some glazing putty. Then we'll come back and sand everything one more time with the 220. Then we will be able to spray our paint. Looking down the side of the boat, all looking good inside. Okay, so now we just need to go back around here one more time, make sure we didn't miss anything. I'm gonna take a piece of sandpaper and I'll go around by hand with the sandpaper all the way around the boat but look at all those spots are gone boom that was pretty smooth to only have one two three four spots that didn't get hit actually this right here i'm gonna sand that a little bit more just to clean out these whalers are very difficult they like the holes warp because of how thin they are because they're all foam so as time goes on they they do warp but other than that everything's looking pretty pretty good oh this is looking good once we get some paint on it it's gonna look beautiful